Welcome to Cute Fast Track Series for API Recommended Practice 572 Inspection Practices for Pressure Vessels. In this lecture, we will discuss Clause 10 Condition Assessment and Repair. This section provides an overview of the general structure of the text in Clause 10 as well as reviews of some of the important subclauses that are in the clause. The following is a list of all the subclauses as listed in the table of contents. In the following slides we highlight important information contained in clause 10 accompanied by the subclauses. General one of the primary focuses of the pressure vessel inspection is the establishment of a pressure vessel's ability to safely continue operation. The vessel may be of solid structural integrity, but may not meet the construction code requirements for the pressure and temperature of its current rating. The rating or fitness for service should be considered. Refer to API 579. ASMEFFS Visual inspection A visual inspection, comparing design parameters and original conditions, or conditions at the time of the last formal assessment of the pressure vessel to current conditions, is the most basic form of condition assessment. The inspector should consider both the nature and the ongoing susceptibility of the equipment item to this damage mechanism. It should be determined whether the damage mechanism will continue in a consistent or inconsistent manner in order to predict the remaining life. APIRP 571 provides guidelines on damage mechanisms, causes, etc. In cases where the damage or defects are severe enough, further evaluation is required. API 579, ASMEFFS, provides guidelines for evaluating damage and associated remaining life. Thickness measurements Once thickness measurements are obtained, the following steps should be followed to assess the vessel's condition. Comparison of the current thickness against nominal, original, and required thicknesses may indicate the condition of the vessel. In cases where a corrosion allowance is included in the original or nominal thickness, this may be subtracted to determine an approximate minimum thickness. If the measured thickness is less than this, then the following should be performed. The required thickness of vessel components may be calculated utilizing the design code of construction, typically ASME BPVC Section 8. If the measured thickness is less than this required thickness, then the following may be performed. A fitness for service analysis utilizing API 579, ASMEFFS for general or local metal loss. Remaining life. Once the vessel condition has been identified as sufficient, the remaining life should be evaluated to ensure the vessel can safely continue operation at least until the next scheduled inspection. API 510, Section 7, includes guidelines for evaluating corrosion rates, remaining life, and maximum allowable working pressure. Methods of repair General before any repairs are made to a vessel, the applicable codes and standards under which it is to be rated should be studied to assure that the method of repair will not violate appropriate requirements. 
the defects requiring repair and the repair procedures employed should be recorded in the permanent records maintained for the vessel. A common defect that typically requires repair is cracks. Cracks can be just surface cracks where grinding out the crack would not exceed the corrosion allowance or the excess wall of the vessel greater than T minimum. Cracks that are deeper than the corrosion allowance or for which repairs are not made should be evaluated by an engineer in accordance with API 579, ASME FFS, Part 9. Welding repairs Repairs made by welding to the vessel should be inspected. The inspection should include a check for completion and quality. Pressure test After repairs are completed, a pressure test should be applied. If the API authorized pressure vessel inspector believes that one is necessary. A pressure test is normally required after an alteration. Pits Scattered pits in pressure vessels are best repaired by welding. As a means of temporary repair, proprietary epoxy base materials are available that can be packed into pits to prevent further corrosion. In all cases, pits should be well cleaned, preferably by abrasive grit blasting, before repairs are made. Cracks Cracks in vessel walls or heads may be repaired by chipping, by flame, arc, or mechanical gouging, or by grinding the crack from end to end and then welding. MT or PT techniques should be employed to assure removal of the crack. If several cracks occur in any one plate, it may be wise to replace the entire plate. If the remaining metal, after flaw removal, provides adequate strength and corrosion protection, the repair may be completed without welding by tapering and blending the edges of the cavity. Repair of supporting vessel equipment Repair of appurtenances such as platforms, ladders, and stairways will usually consist of replacing excessively worn parts. Stairway treads that have been worn smooth can be roughened by placing weld beads on the worn surfaces. Also, proprietary coatings containing a grit type material are available. Review questions. Question number one. A vessel is structurally sound, but due to corrosion it is no longer thick enough for the designed conditions. The vessel. Answer is A. Question number two. Which document provides guidelines on evaluation different forms of degradation? Answer is A. Question number three. A vessel's U1 form indicates that the new shell thickness is 0.500 and the specified corrosion allowance is 0.125. Which of the following is true? Answer is B. Question number four. If a jurisdiction requires a vessel repair to meet the National Board Inspection Code, what stamp must the repair organization possess?
Answer is D. Question number 5. A vessel's shell thickness is 2.000. The corrosion allowance is 0 0.250. During an inspection, the wonderful, talented, API inspector discovers in a longitudinal weld, a 24 inches long crack that is 0 0.150 deep. Which of the following is true? Answer is D. Question number 6. A vessel repair is completed. A pressure test. Answer is B. Question number 7. After a vessel alteration, a pressure test is. Answer is A. Question number 8. When removing a crack in a vessel using flame or arc gouging. Answer is A. Question number 9. A deep crack in a vessel shell weld will be removed and then re-welded. Which of the following is true? Answer is D. Question number 10. A crack in a vessel is removed. The groove. Answer is D. Question number 11. Stairway treads that have been worn smooth. Answer is A. This lecture is prepared by Samir Saad, and this is his profile.